Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about what your body fat says about your hormone levels. In other words, we're gonna be talking about what it means when you have body fat or excess body fat on different areas of your body. Uh, what you may not know is that most weight gain, um, at least in my opinion, is attributed to changes in your hormone levels. Okay, This is especially true of certain patients, especially those with thyroid problems and existing hormone imbalances. And what type of hormone imbalances you have dictate where that body fat is going to grow and is going to accumulate. So if you have, a, let's say, a strange pattern of body fat um, accumulation on your body, this information may help you. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. We're gonna talk a little bit about body fat and how that relates to your hormones today. Um, so it's a little bit different, but it'll cover um, the weight loss aspect of, of what I was mentioning before as well. So before we talk about this, I wanna mention that this is not an exact science, okay? What I mean by that is that there's a lot of overlap between these areas. And if you have, it's very possible for you to have, let's say, body fat in your upper arms, and it could be due to something, some other hormone imbalance not related here, or it could be due to genetics or something like that. However, in my experience in treating a lot of people, I find that this information is at least directionally correct or mostly correct in, most ca in many cases, okay? What that means is that usually if you have body fat in these areas, you have a problem um, of some sort of hormone problem that I'm gonna be mentioning and talking about a little bit further here. So take it with a grain of salt, but, and it's not perfect, but it is a good guide and can help you to figure out where you should be putting your attention. So let's talk about fat on the upper arms and lower legs. Now these are areas which are unusual, we'll say, for people to gain body fat. And in my experience, people who have body fat in, the, in their upper arms and lower legs tends to be caused by estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone imbalances. So these are your sex hormones. And I will tell you from my experience that this sort of body fat can't really be targeted. Um, like you can't do exercises specifically for your upper arms to lose that fat in that area. That's not really how the fat loss works. But if you can target and at least test for these estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, you may have um, a chance of reducing or at least eliminating that body fat. But I will tell you, compared to the other places that we're gonna be talking about, treating body, body fat in the upper arms and lower legs areas is very difficult because there probably is a strong genetic component in addition to these. Um, so I have had success in helping people, but this tends to persist. So for instance, let me give you an example. Let's, let's say you lose, um, you have body fat all over, let's say you're 50 pounds overweight, but you have excess fat in the upper arms and upper legs. That will probably be the last place that you lose weight. You'll lose it in your stomach, you'll lose it in your, your chest, in your back, etc. You lose it on all those places first before your body starts to take that fat away from the upper arms and legs. I've had good success in treating people with this problem um, using HCG. Um, which is human chorionic gonadotropin. If you use it correctly, I'm not talking about the HCG by, diet, by the way. I'm talking about the use of HCG as a hormone, which balances these sex hormones and also your thyroid. So I have videos on how to use HCG, um, why I like using it and so on, but don't confuse HCG as a, ther as a therapy by itself with, with the HCG diet. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, so the next one, that's number one. The next one would be abdominal fat. Now this one is pretty straightforward and usually correct, okay? And it usually is an indication that you have one or both of these problems, and that is insulin, usually insulin resistance, and or cortisol, which would be an adrenal problem. So abdominal fat means that you just have fat in the belly area, and I've seen a lot of patients who have fat, and they really only have it concentrated just in the belly. If you have fat, like, you know, let's say you're 20, 30 pounds overweight, and 90% of it is located in your abdomen or in the belly area, we'll just call this belly fat, it's all very, very, very likely to be related to insulin and or cortisol. Now insulin, uh, you get insulin resistance from eating a lot of carbohydrates, especially sugary foods, things like that. But also cortisol, which comes from stress, can also make insulin worse, which is why these things tend to go together. So a lot of people who have cortisol issues, which would be adrenal issues that they get from excess stress, day-to-day -day stress, things like that, not sleeping enough, reliance on caffeine, pretty much any of the symptoms of adrenal fatigue. If you have recurrent stress, that will cause an insulin problem. And that's why these things usually go together. The good news is all you have to do to treat those problems is it will, you know, you treat the cortisol, you treat the insulin and your belly fat should go away. You can treat cortisol problems using things like adrenal adaptogens and adrenal glandulars and insulin can be treated with diet and it can also be treated with supplements such as berberin, um, glucomannan, there's a lot of supplements, alpha lipoic acid, chromium, etc. So there are ways for you to treat insulin as well as cortisol, including medications, by the way, that are very effective at treating and lowering insulin. There aren't really good medications to lower cortisol. There are a few, but they're insanely expensive, so I don't recommend them. And also, when you have over-the-counter supplements like 
adrenal adaptogens and glandulars, it's preferable to use those um, instead of medications if possible. So focus on your cortisol, focus on your adrenals, and by doing so, you also need to focus on insulin, and that should help you lose that belly fat. Now, of course, this assumes that you're eating a healthy, whole food diet. You definitely need to be doing, doing something like that. A lot of people have had success using things like keto um, and carnivore. I'll just abbreviate that. Well, I guess I'll write it all out. These type of diets uh, can help, especially with insulin resistance, but they have other issues that they may cause problems with your thyroid and so on. So be aware and be cautious if you ever try to do those kind of diets to lose things like belly fat. The third place would be fat in the trunk and or the neck area. Again, the trunk, if you're not familiar with that terminology, what it means is anywhere basically aside from your arms and legs. So imagine all of your fat is just in your trunk. It should be your breast, your back, um, your belly, that sort of area. So truncal obesity and or obesity in the back of the neck is usually almost always a cortisol problem. Now this, I would say belly fat is a minor cortisol problem. As you get these sort of issues, that means you have a pretty big cortisol problem. You may actually start to see elevations in your serum cortisol levels, or if you check a salivary cortisol, you'll see it actually become, start to become high uh, because these are kind of signs, pre-signs of Cushing's disease and things like that, conditions which cause actual high elevations of cortisol. The elevation of cortisol, which causes belly fat, is not usually super high, okay? It's usually, um, it's usually not reflected in your, in your, th in your lab tests, um, and it's usually just a problem with the receptor and the signaling and so on inside the body. But once your cortisol starts actually elevating, that's when you can get problems and you start to get the truncal obesity and the obesity sort of in the back of the neck area, um, sometimes referred to as buffalo hump. Okay, so the next place would be decreased muscle mass. So I know we're talking about body fat, but understanding what's happening with your muscle mass also gives you a clue as to what's happening with your hormones. And there are a lot of women, men, men as well, but a lot of women who suffer from decreased muscle mass, or I would say here, the inability to put muscle mass on. So if you're going to the gym, if you're working out, um, or if you're, and, and you're not noticing gains in terms of the size of your arms or legs or, or your butt area, that's a concerning sign, okay? You should see improvement. And by the way, if you're not doing anything, but you're seeing your, your muscle mass shrink or reduce over time, that is most likely a sign that you have decreased testosterone. In both men and women, testosterone is important for regulating how much muscle mass you have. And so low testosterone, which again is important in men and women, can cause this decrease in muscle mass or what we call um, atrophy, um, atrophy of the muscles. So that's just another way to put it, but definitely be looking at your testosterone. Now you'll see a lot of overlap here. So let me just explain this. In this case, I mentioned decreased muscle mass is associated with decreased testosterone, but I also, also mentioned that fat on your upper arms and lower legs can be caused by de decreased testosterone. Up here, it's usually a combination of all three of these. And down here, this one's usually just an isolated event of just having low testosterone. But again, remember, right, from the very beginning, I gave you that warning, this is not perfect, but it does tend to correlate pretty well. Let's go on to the next one. The next one we're talking about whole body fat. Um, this one is a little more uh, generic, but in my experience, almost all the time, uh, whole body fat over the entire body, let's say it's just evenly distributed, you have it in your, your arms and your legs, it's almost as if you know, you're just, your whole body's just sort of growing from your skin everywhere, just um, expanding outwards. That type of fat is usually a thyroid problem, usually low thyroid problem, and or a leptin problem. Now I've put leptin here. Leptin is one of the most important fat storing hormones. In fact, I think it is the most important hormone, especially when you're trying to lose weight um, or you're interested in weight loss. And the thyroid impacts a lot of people because it manages your metabolism. So if the metabolism drops, you may just start to gain weight everywhere in your body. It's not really specific. So thyroid related weight gain um, is not, doesn't have any specific uh, areas where it will cause fat on the body if you have that problem. Same thing with leptin. These are just sort of generic problems that cause full body or whole body um, weight gain. I should point out here though that both of these problems can impact one another and take for instance the thyroid. Thyroid problems can start to cause, give you estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone problems as well. So what may happen, and this might be you depending on how far along you are in your thyroid disease, you may develop thyroid disease, start to just gain you know 10-15 pounds over your whole body, and then as this thyroid causes estrogen and progesterone problems, then you might develop problems in your um, upper arms or in your butt area or thighs and so on. So it can, your weight gain can sort of evolve over time as these things impact one another. Okay. So just be aware of that. Um, you can test for all these problems, by the way. So that's usually what I recommend, but in the absence of being able to test, let's say your doctor doesn't want to, or doesn't know, doesn't know this information. You can use these, the, the places where you're gaining weight as a guide to help you figure out what type of hormone problems you are experiencing. Next would be um, fat on the thighs and or butt region. This is almost always due to an increase in estrogen. So anything that is causing estrogen dominance 
or excess estrogen in the body will cause weight gain specifically in those areas. I should include here the breast as well. So if you're having breast enlargement, if you're having enlargement of the thighs and butt area, all of those areas tend to be exclusively caused by an increase in estrogen. It could be caused by a decrease in progesterone, um, which can cause a relative increase in estrogen. That is something that does happen, but usually women who experience this sort of weight gain, it almost always is caused by too much estrogen. That could be genetic, by the way. It could be from thyroid problems. It could be from a lot of different issues. Uh, so just be aware of that. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you why it's happening. It just says that high estrogen tends to cause weight gain in these specific areas. So lastly, let me lift this up so you can see it. We're gonna be talking about weight fluctuation. So there are a lot of people uh, who talk to me and they'll say, hey, my weight is fluctuating like crazy, five to 10 pounds every single month. That is almost always not fat, by the way, although I have seen a couple cases where, where it may be fat. It's hard to tell exactly without getting something like a DEXA scan. But in the cases of rapid weight loss, it's usually always related to um, progesterone levels. So usually high progesterone. Progesterone, for whatever reason, seems to cause changes in fluid and changes in water shift. So you can quickly and rapidly gain weight and lose weight depending on how progesterone impacts how much fluid you're carrying at any given time. And if you get rid of it, you can pee it out and that's why you can lose a lot of weight. And it also seems to be that progesterone does seem to have some impact on fat mass, right? Same way that estrogen does, but it's a little bit different. And so I'm not convinced that it causes true uh, weight gain in the, form of in the form of fat, like the increase in, a, in abdominal or uh, the increase in adipose tissue. However, for sure, it can cause shifts in your overall weight which I think are probably related to water or fluid shifts. So if that is happening to you, if you're rapidly going through five to 10 pounds of weight changes every single month, especially if it's related to your period or some, some aspect of your menstrual cycle, such as ovulation, that's a sign you definitely wanna get checked. So what do you do if you're experiencing this? The first thing is to get those serum lab tests. Just order these tests. Get your estrogen, get your progesterone, get your testosterone, get your leptin, get your insulin, get your thyroid, get your cortisol. You can check for all of these things. Insurance covers it. It's totally, uh, it's not a big deal to get them. You can check most of them in your blood. Uh, cortisol you can check in other places as well, but you can definitely at least check them all as a cursory glance just in your blood. Get these tests and see if they are abnormal. There are things which influence the uh, accuracy of these hormone tests. So for instance, if you're taking birth control, you can't look at your estrogen and progesterone levels because birth control suppresses them basically down to zero. So you have, there are some things that you have to take into account as you look at these, but by checking your hormones out, it can tell you what's going on inside your body and how and why you are gaining weight. And by targeting, the, targeting these things, which I, have tons of which I have tons of videos on, which show you how to, for instance, lower your progesterone or increase your progesterone or lower your estrogen or naturally increase your testosterone or naturally increase your thyroid and so on. You can impact these in a positive way. So if you have any questions about what we've talked about here, leave your comment below. If you think that you match any of these body um, uh, fat areas and, and you think that it's related to your hormones, let me know as well. I'd love to hear about that. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise I will see you in the next one.